Hello there, and welcome to part two of my first YouTube video on this channel, which is almost 17 years in the making at the end of this year. In 2006, I did my first video on here about uh, my R&B record collection on vinyl. Now, in those days, of course, that was the less expensive option. You know, if, if any of you know me in the VC, you know that I come from the hip-hop era, crate digger side of things, where it's the uh, less expensive or cost-intensive option. It ain't that way now, okay? It's not that way in life anymore. Uh, it's costly. Uh, my record collection has grown from a few handfuls of records back then, you know, 14 years ago, to almost having my own personal record store now, as the cliche goes. And I'm going to do some dedications to my friends out in the VC uh, toward the end of this video. But uh, before I go into this, I want to say that I'm well aware that there's a audio and visual time lag on this video, like the first one, that I haven't been able to solve in the last 9, 10 days since I did my last video uh, between my external condenser mic and my webcam. So if any of you out there use the NCH debut video capture software to make videos and have an external mic and a webcam and have this sync issue, please, please tell me how to solve it. I've tried putting, um, changing the frame rate, changing the audio rate to be in sync. I, I just want to know how to do it. If you can put it in the comment section, please. I want my videos to look as good as possible. Quality means a lot to me in every aspect. Just letting you all know. Anyway, let's get to the records. Uh, these records that I'm going to be presenting here today all come from that R&B spectrum I just talked about. Um, and they span two decades, from around 1969 to 1988. So the first one we're going to start out with, and I'm not going to give full reviews of these. If you follow me on Facebook and the VC, you already know that I've reviewed a lot of these records there already. But the first one I'm going to start out with is... Ramsey Lewis's Another Voyage from 1969 on the Cadet label. Let me show you the back of that. Here's Ramsey with his kids up at the top. Uh, Ramsey Lewis died um, last year, RIP. Um, this was the last album that uh, Maurice White was featured on before he went off and formed a little band called Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> and uh, there's a song on this album right here, uh, called uh, uh, Uhuru, which, of course, in the language of Swahili, means freedom. And uh, this particular album, right here, is very much going from the soul jazz to the jazz funk sort of thing, uh, you know, and which Ramsey was doing a lot in the late 60s. But the song Uhuru on this album... Uh, it's Maurice White playing kalimba over a really funky instrumental. And if any of you have the Earth, Wind & Fire album Power Light, I'll be talking about that in a future video. Um, at the end of a song on that called Straight From The Heart, there's a little short musical interlude on that album known as Mizar at the end of the first side of that album. That is basically a reprise of Uhuru on this album, only done in more of an 80s synth funk way. So if you have the Power Light album, and you have this, or you can find this on YouTube or whatever, check them out. It's real cool. Uh, this is a fairly recent purchase. Um, Timmy Thomas's... Uh, I'm sorry, I had that record upside down. Timmy Thomas's Why Can't We Live Together. Um, this is a very special album. This is part of the... Florida Miami sound. As a matter of fact, it may actually be the beginning of that sound. Um, it's very stripped down, based in organ, organ drums, kind of like what Sly Stone was doing with There's a Riot going on, only much darker. Uh, Timmy also died last year, RIP Timmy Thomas. Uh, this is one of those records that, uh, you know, I feel that I wish I didn't pay as much for, but I, I, I love it. And I want to give a shout out right here to. Uh, Nate and Stephanie at Vinyl Canteen in Bangor. I'm sending a link to this video out your way. I want you to see this because there's going to be some records I got from you here. Yeah, this is a special one and I'm really happy to have get a hold of this. And this is from 1972. 
and it's on the uh actually i'm going to show you the label because it's a little more of an obscure label it's on uh, the record label called uh glades i'm going to see if you can see that a little bit glades records it's a subsidiary of uh tk so uh I want to make sure these albums get in there as well as possible because, you know, you want to take good care of your records. This, I'm going to dedicate out to a friend I'm going to talk about at the end of this video. Brass Construction's first album. Uh, in terms of, you know, pre-disco funk, getting to that very danceable, up-tempo point of it, Movin' is one of the all-time jams, I'm telling you. Move is, Movin' is fantastic. Uh, Randy Muller formed this band in New York. And the thing about Brass Construction is, um, as that friend I'll talk about later in the video will tell you, there's a Greatest Hits album on CD with the exact same cover as this, made and printed in the 1990s. So if you see that on CD and think you're getting the debut album, you're not. If you see it on vinyl, you're getting this, so... And this is the one you want because it has moving, changing, dance. You know, they're all kind of peaking. They're all kind of one name songs. And they're all great melodic horn funk with a lot of good spirit to it. It's just a really amazing. One of the best debuts in funk that I can think of. I know it's a pretty famous album, actually, but I wanted to include it here because I've actually, this is my second time having it on vinyl, and this is in much better shape. I don't even know what happened to my original copy, but. This is a much better shape vinyl. Um, this is an example uh, of a situation that uh, same friend was talking about um, called Funk in Every Aisle of the Record Store, which we see a lot in the 70s and into the 80s. Uh, a group called Attitudes, uh, the album is called Good News. And what's special about this, I found this actually in a dollar bin, and I'm happy about it. It's on George Harrison's Dark Horse label. I see the label there. Um, I always collect Dark Horse stuff, no matter generally who it is. Because uh, I love George Harrison, and I love what he was doing on his custom label. And uh, this album is actually featuring people like um, young David Foster and Jim Keltner. And it's a really sophisticated uh, mid-70s funk album. In the Wake of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Really good production on this. And some great songs, too. You uh, want to check that out. There's David Foster. Uh, right. Here. Now, this is going to be an odd one. Because you would never think it would be in a list of R&B, Funk, or Soul records. But... Christy and Jimmy McNichol. Um, okay. I love Christy McNichol. She was amazing in Family. I'm glad she's dealing with her uh, mental health in a good way now, even if she had to leave acting. Uh, and this is like a teen pop album for the most part, but I'm including this mainly because of one song on it that blew my mind, and Christy sings lead on it, and it's called Go For It. It is one of the most ferocious, horn-filled, um, you know, disco funk you could ever imagine. The bass line is off the hook. I, Listen to it on YouTube. Uh, somebody said on that that uh, they, uh, Jimmy and Christy performed this on the um, Jerry Lewis Telethon one year. But I'm just I'm putting this on there for one song because, you know, this is a good album generally. You know, your typical teen pop kind of record of the era. But for that one song, this is amazing. This sort of completes a bit of a conundrum for me. William D. Smith, um, otherwise known as Smitty. Now, if you know anything about this singer, songwriter, musician, he played on a lot of records in the late 1970s. And uh, the thing about this album, I'm going to go a little bit more into it. He has a great, really clear, really rangy voice, really good production. And there's a song on here, um, on an album he played on, the self-titled Larry Carlton album from 1978, called Where Did You Come From? It's from Larry Carlton's album. The original version is on this that Smitty does, and it's amazing. There's also a great call song called Sweetie Pie, which is very nice. Very Earth, Wind, and Fire meets Donny Hathaway. 
you know, sweet as fun can be, soulful, really, a really good hidden gem of an album by a guy who's known more for what he does in the background. You know, I always like to celebrate those kind of people, so, you know, that, I'm just putting him up there. You know. And here we have an album I was looking for way back when I made my first video, but it wasn't that easy to get then. Norma Jean Wright, uh, one of the original singers of Chic. Um, this is basically a Chic production, one of the first Chic productions, and this is from 1978. Uh, I think this is one of the first Chic productions before Diana Ross and Sister Sledge. You know, uh, Nile Rodgers and Bernard Edwards did a great job with this, um, and they featured musicians like John Faddis. Uh, the thing about this album has a great song called Saturday on it, which is really good. And the thing about this album is that it really got going the idea of the Chic organization having huge importance in making disco a uh, actual respectable musical genre. You know, you don't often think of those words being put together, you know, coming from my generation, being a gen late in the game Gen Xer as I am, but they are. And this is a supreme example of it. Really good production, really good dance groups, just really good songs in general. You know, great album from the disco era. Starguard. Um, I've heard of these ladies before, but uh, I actually think I have all their studio albums now. Excellent disco funk, leaning toward the funkier side of things. And this is just a really great album from them. They can do really good ballads, too. Amazing group here. And this is from 1979. I think this is actually their second album, if I recall. Or their third. Edward Bird's song, We Lost Him Not Too Long Ago. Um, this is probably the most expensive album I bought here, but it's totally worth it. Uh, this guy was a Bay Area uh, talent. He actually owned a juice bar or organic restaurant out there, I believe, if I heard it correctly. And uh, this is an album that has songs on it. Uh, the title track on this is amazing. Rapper Dapper Snapper. Um, that's kind of popular because I think that got sampled a lot. This guy played with Roy Ayers, you know, and he has, as he's a keyboardist, with such a unique sound. Such an amazing, unique sound. Um, here he is, I think, with one of those Moog probes. Um, this is from uh, 1981, this album. Um, he has an album from 78, too, with a song called Cola Bottle Baby, which, you know, Daft Punk, of course, looped for a harder, better, faster, stronger. So this guy has an amazing place in sampling history. But, you know, sampling aside, you should seek people out like this for their own purposes. Great stuff. Uh, Climax from 1981. What an album title this is. Never underestimate the power of a woman. The reason why they call themselves that, this is an all-female band. When I say female band, this is not female singers or songwriters. This is These are female instrumentalists. You know, you hear a lot of people saying now, oh yeah, female instrumentalists are new. They're not new. This was an in, this was an innovative group. I mean, you know, rock had their um, runaways, things like that. Funk had climax. They weren't getting big hits here as they would be in '84. This is an album from '81, but all fired up is an amazing boogie funk track from the early '80s. This whole album's amazing. If you find it, I'd recommend getting it. Uh, this is another special album uh, we're talking about here. Uh, Charles Erlin, Erlin's Jam. That friend I was mentioning to you about earlier a couple times, um, uh, he and I were jamming a few years ago off the song Marsha's Waltz off this. Uh, Charles Early was one of the 70s um, great organ people. And uh, on this album, he really went for the electro-funk thing and kind of went for a more 80s jazz funk sort of vibe. And I think he did a really good job with it. Uh, this is an amazing album. Um, Laser Lips, you know, it even has a hype sticker on the cover in case you can't see it. Right there. Let's see if I can get that over there. That's a good one. This is an excellent album, so if you find it, it's an amazing thing to find. Now, the last album on this video that I'm going to be dealing with is Club Nouveau. Listen to the message. Uh, this is a band that's known primarily for their cover of Bill Withers' Lean On Me around 1986. 
Uh, this is their second album from 88, and this is a whole different story. Um, it starts out with a really industrial funk song called It's a Cold, Cold World. This is heavy social message-oriented music about the social politics of the time, um, civil rights, all of that. So, you know, I hear people say all the time, you know, there wasn't a lot of music in the late 80s that had messages like the 60s and 70s. Well, there was, and this is a good example of it, outside of hip-hop. This is a great example of that. So that's just, you know, my uh, last part, um, or well, my newest part of my R&B record collection. Again, I apologize for that time lag, but I want to thank all my friends out there in the VC. Big guy, Henry Hopkins of the uh, references I made to Funk in Every Aisle, uh, Marcus Waltz and all that. That's all, Henrik. Thank you very much, Henrik. Thank you for Stephanie and Nate at Vital Canteen in Bangor, Maine. Thank you very much for your contributions to this collection. Uh, I also want to thank uh, my friends on the Facebook VC, Patrick McDonald, John A. Anderson, Shane Keen, um, Scott Cortier, um, uh, John Pengley, uh, you know, I'm probably forgetting a whole bunch of you, but you've all been amazing and supportive. Joseph Ramps, another one. I want to thank all of you for enjoying my vinyl reviews in the Facebook VC for a long time. And I hope you all join me on YouTube and subscribe to my channel and look at this video. Time lag and all. I put as much effort into getting this all fixed as possible and getting these records out of my storage area for you to see. And there's going to be more of these in the future, so keep an eye out. So keep grooving and peace.